Well, we're getting close to the election on the weekend and a couple of candidates whose names you might have come across because they've both spent time in and around councils is Jade Darko, who's a councillor at Clarence City Council, the first transgender woman to serve on a Tasmanian council. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Thanks for coming in. And Gideon Cordova, who is a Canberra councillor, and we spoke to your sister running as you're running independent. I'm running with the Greens. Your sister's running independent in Franklin. You're running with the Greens. Good so uh, in terms of uh, the work you've done, Jade, let's start there on council. What impact do you feel you've had as a councillor? Um, so what I've really been trying to do there is stand up for people in Clarence, everyday people in Clarence. So that's the folks that we've been out talking to on the doors about those those real issues. Um, and one thing that has come to our head is obviously the High Performance Centre. And I just want to um, give some huge respect to the residents yesterday that turned out um, to make their views heard. And we did hear there were protests at the footy celebration and they were separated from them by police. Um, for you, Gideon, and Kingborough Council, do you feel you've had impact there? Absolutely, Rick. So we're now the first council that's unequivocally said as a result of my motion that if uh, a pub or a club wants to have pokies in uh, the Kingborough municipality, we will say no. We'll put in a community interest test opposing that. We've managed to divest from fossil fuels. We've declared climate emergency. We've got a climate change officer. You can just see the results in the Kingston, the transformation of the Kingston CBD. I've managed to get a street tree strategy implemented. So there's a, a whole laundry list of, of wins that we've got. But obviously this is a collaboration and it's about working collaboratively and I've managed to do that on Kingborough Council. Um, Jay, do you think the Clarence Council has been as forthcoming in terms of policies, green policies? Um, so we definitely have a lot of good policies, but unfortunately things like at a recent council um, meeting we heard that the tree policy is a bit on pause and so we're going to have to be pushing a bit harder on that front. There's an article in today's Guardian, and we were actually talking about this, Penny and I, this morning, that uh, thousands of people marched for the forests over the weekend, but environment hasn't featured uh, much in this campaign, nor has in a way, climate. It's not something we've heard a lot of. So, Jade, what would you like to see happen in Tasmania in terms of environmental policy? Um, so, first and foremost, an end to native forest logging and a return of lands to traditional owners. Um, that's a real no-brainer for me because that's the really big emitter for climate change in Tasmania. And for you, Gideon? We have to end native forest logging. We know for a fact that this is a mendicant industry. Uh, we're worse than the other states around the country. And basically, we're a laggard. Tasmania should be a shining beacon for the rest of the world about how we treat our environment, about how well we protect our environment. And there's a huge opportunity in nature-based tourism uh, that we can we can leverage as long as we don't have to get stuck behind logging trucks that are destroying the planet, destroying the climate, and, and destroying our grandchildren and children's futures. 5 to 8, ABC Radio Hobart. I'm Rick Goddard. Talking to... Greens candidate Jay Darko and Gideon Cordova. We've spoken with a lot of smaller candidates from minor parties or fringe parties, people who are realistically only expecting maybe three or 400 votes, oh. might hit a 1,000, they, they, their eyes light up. Um, how is your polling, Jay, with the Greens? You've got party support behind you, unlike the independents. What, what's your sense of how you might perform? Um, so the Greens do perform a little bit differently to other parties. So I'm actually telling everybody, vote one for Rosalie Woodruff, um, because we do have a ranked voting system. So we're more collaborative than competitive. We have a sense of we're all fighting for the cause, not for ourselves. Um, what does that mean in terms of having a ranked voting system, Gideon? Well, I'm telling everybody to vote one through seven for the Greens, and we're going to with that, we'll be able to get the Greens in the balance of power. This is about tacking, tackling the cost of living. It's about getting health and education. It's about protecting our environment. And the way we're going to do that is with more Greens in the balance of power in the next parliament. Some big names in Franklin, Erica Betts, Jackie Petrisma, Nick Street, Dean Young. Um, Labor have Meg Brown, Toby Thorpe and Dean Winter. Do you think you've got the name recognition to tackle that? Well, I've been on the council now four and a half years and... I've been door, door knocking hundreds of doors now. And what we've seen, I was talking to somebody in Moraine just the other day who said, she was telling me about how her daughter's struggling with the cost of rent and how just to get one single bag of groceries is $90 now. Mm. This is ridiculous, it's unsustainable and it's unfair. Now we can't reward 10 years of liberal mismanagement and underperformance, we can't reward that. We have to get more Greens and, and more Greens into the parliament, vote one through seven for the Greens so that we can finally tackle the cost of living and housing and health and protect the environment. In terms of being a, a balance of power on the crossbench, I mean, both parties have said they won't do a deal with the Greens. They might be doing deals with other independents or Jackie Lambie Network. How many seats, Jade, do you think would give the Greens efficacy in Parliament? 
Um, so we're looking at up to six as the number that we're actually um, really highly targeting. Obviously, that's um, getting Cecily Rosalyn in Bass, getting Tabitha Badger in Lyons, getting Gideon Cordova in Franklin and Helen Burnett in Clark. Um, and we're hoping that with that representation in Parliament that we are able to achieve those changes for everyday Tasmanians that Gideon just listed. Are you finding out on the campaign trail that people are really just talking, Jade, more about their hip pocket than climate or environment, or do they see them as linked? Um, so we're not actually first and foremost talking about climate because we know that we are already standing up for the climate and people know that we will stand up for the climate. So that one's kind of almost a given. Mm. Uh, obviously not completely a given. We've got to obviously still put the... Um, proof in the pudding but we're talking about yeah cost of living we're talking about housing we're talking about ending unreasonable rent increases and getting in some actual rights for renters um health is such a major issue in tasmania it's front of mind for tasmanians the system is struggling if not crippled do you have clear policies on that gideon extensive policies and you can read them all on the greens website but importantly i was talking to somebody who was explaining to me their relative has stage four cancer and yet they spent seven hours in the waiting room at the royal hobart we need to fully service we need to fully fund the staffing requirements and also we need to actually put people before profits and the thing that breaks my heart is that we have both major parties the coles and woolies of australian politics the liberal and labor party who care more about afl ceo bosses and giving a billion dollar gift for a stadium for afl mainland ceos then they they care more about that than they care about everyday tasmanians who are just trying to work hard and feed their families and that's got to stop this is our generational opportunity to make a change and saturday is the day to make that change by voting one to seven greens gideon cordova and jay darko both city councillors both running for the greens in this election. It's such a weird thing, Jade, surely to plan for once it's over, then do you put your feet up and relax? But then if you get elected, you can't, surely. Um, yeah, absolutely not. Although if I do get elected, that would mean three Greens in Franklin, which would be an absolutely splendid result. We might even be looking at a Green government under that case. So a uh, <laughs> bit of an outside chance, but absolutely ready to hit the ground rolling if we do get that outcome. It's a very honest and uh, humble assessment. It's great to talk to you both this morning. It's seven o'clock. Uh, expect that front to come through this afternoon and uh, maybe six to eight mils of rain. Let's call that eight o'clock and it's news. Subscribe to the ABC Radio Hobart e-newsletter today.